This is Chuck Miller from Oracle. I want to take you through part of Enterprise Asset Management, or EAM, that you may not be familiar with, and that's our mobile application. EAM is our plant and equipment maintenance module, and we've created a mobile application so you can use your uh, cell phone or iPad tablets to, uh, to access and transact against EAM in eBusiness Suite. And there's a listing of some of the things that you can do in the mobile application. It's another user interface and another entry point into the Oracle system that we have for you. And I'm going to take you through some screens so you can get a feel for the capabilities behind this. The first thing I do, obviously, is I sign on, and this is what the screens look like. This demonstration is coming directly from my iPhone. So I've got my user ID and my password, and I sign in. And my default view is my calendar. So I want to know what I'm going to be doing over the course of the day. Um, you can change your default view. You can have your work orders come up, your assets, work requests, anything like that. But I thought for a technician, you would want your calendar to come up with all your tasks that you have to do in a given day. This is simply a list view. I can also change that to a day view. When I go to day view, I see by time when I have work scheduled in my um, queue. So what has been dispatched to me. I can also have a month view, and in the month view, I've drilled down into a specific day, and I see all the work I have to accomplish on this given day. Now, what I can also do is from here, where I see the operation cool engine down, if I click into that uh, field, it brings me into the actual operation where I can transact against the work order that, that I'm going to do. Uh, we're not going to do that from here. We're going to do it from a different spot. So let's exit the calendar view. And this is my main menu. And this gives me my uh, options as the things that I can go to and the sequence I want to go into them in. And I'm going to go to assets next. And when I pick assets, uh, one of the defaults is my assets. And when I click on my assets, my assets are those assets that have been assigned to me to work on. And I see that I have two delivery trucks that are in my queue that have been dispatched to me that these are things that I have to work on. So I'm gonna select one and it brings up the header record of this particular asset. And I see things like where it's located, it's criticality, work orders and all that stuff. Um, the last time it had a failure, the last meter reading and that stuff. And I do see that I have a bunch of overdue work orders and a bunch of work orders. This is an asset we use for just about everything. So uh, there's been a lot of people transacting against it. So this is the summary record. And if you look down the bottom of the screen, I am going to go and select the work order uh, icon. And when I do that, it brings up all the work orders that I have for this particular asset. We're gonna transact against a, a work order today. Down the bottom of the screen again, I can also see the work request that I have. So I've got a couple work requests into the system that I can turn into work orders. And then I went to the quality tab so I can see uh, a quality collection plan that I have. So I have an inspection uh, that I have to do. So I have a whole checklist that I would enter in my quality results in, in the EAM for that. Another view I can look at is my work orders. So I can see my work orders or my overdue work orders. I am going to isolate uh, my work orders. So here's two work orders that I have in the queue. Those are the ones that came right from the calendar. As I said before, I could have transacted against those work orders right from the calendar, but I've elected to come this way so you can get a full flavor for what we can do. So I'm going to select the work order and I see the header record for said work order, and I see dates and times and the asset group and, and what has to be done. This is an oil change I'm gonna be doing against this truck. So these are the details of the work order. And then again, down the bottom of the screen, I see operations and I've selected operations. This has uh, shown me all the operations that have been assigned to me, and I've highlighted the one we're gonna work on in red. To, to draw your eye to that. So this is the operation I'm gonna click on. We're gonna transact against it. When I go in, it's asking me if I wanna charge time against this so I can clock in and charge my time. That's my uh, description 
of the operation that I'm doing. That's who I am, the, the resource, mechanic one, my date and start time and my durations. Notice at the top of the screen, I also have a, a warning message saying I, I need 10 materials before I can, uh, can complete the job, but we're gonna get to that. First, we're gonna charge time against this work order. So I've entered in uh, an hour that I'm gonna charge against here. And I get a message that uh, the resource transaction has been successfully completed. So I've successfully logged my time against this work order. Now I'm gonna go into the materials tab and I see it said 10 materials and that's because I really have two materials at a quantity of five each, two times five, 10. And it's showing me the on hand balance for each of the materials that I need. So we're gonna take shop rags first and it brings up the issue screen and I've entered in a five into that uh, issue quantity screen. I'm gonna issue five of the five. I see where I'm gonna be pulling them from, uh, forklift stores get a message that uh, I've successfully issued the materials to this work order. And I'm gonna go and issue the five quarts of oil against this work order now too. And when I do that, same screen, different item and quantity, I'm gonna issue five from fleet stores. And I get a message that that material has been issued there too. So there's, there's no issuable material left for me on this work order, everything has been successfully uh, issued. And now I can go through and, and actually complete the work order. I've skipped ahead instead of reporting all the operations on here. And I said, I've just reported another operation. I'm gonna call this complete. So I have my completion dates and times and I've completed the work order. I get a message that the operation is complete and I see that. And now I'm gonna complete the work order now. Sorry, I stepped ahead of myself. I'm gonna complete this work order now. This is my completion transaction screen, giving me the shutdown duration. And the work order has been completed. So I do have a, a complete picture. And what I've done is I have started from scratch with my calendar, picked out work that I had to do, picked out a work order reported my labor against the work order, reported my time against the work order, and have completed the work order. So I've got a, a work order off of my list. And that shows me on my dispatch list that one of my two work orders is complete, and now I'm free to work on the next one. One of the things I wanna show you, if you look, um, there is a field called offline. It's actually a button that I've switched. What EAM enables me to do is run mobile application in an offline mode, and then I can do a synchronization at a later time. So if I'm at a facility that has poor connectivity, or if I'm in an area of the organization that has poor connectivity, I can still do my job. I'm not shut down, and then I can just enter my transactions uh, into my mobile device and then synchronize at a later time. I get a message asking me, am I sure I wanted to run in disconnected mode? And it is going through a synchronization process now where it is going to sync um, my work orders and work requests and assets to my mobile device. And I can do a complete uh, refresh or I can do an incremental refresh, depends on what I wanna do. I elected to do an incremental refresh, so just updates from my last uh, refresh. And then once the synchronization is uh, done, I see that I, I do have my work order that was in question before, the one that's remaining. I still have the capability to do all my transactions against this in an offline mode. And I notice that this work order, which is some kind of inspection, has an attachment associated with this. And remember, I'm not connected to a server. So I'm gonna take a look at the attachment and I see that I have an, an inspection checklist that I, that I can complete. This can also be the form of a quality plan if I so desire. So what I wanted to do was give you a, a brief summary overview of what EAM disconnect, uh, mobile looks like in connected and disconnected mode. I hope that was uh, worth watching and thank you very much for your time.